The all-electric Nissan LEAF isn't the model that typically comes to mind when the conversation turns to hot hatches. That could change later this month, however, when a new concept named Nissan LEAF Nismo breaks cover at the biennial Tokyo Auto Show. The Nismo stands out from the garden variety LEAF with a much sportier design. It's like an electric car and track shoes. It receives a concept-specific body kit with red accents, a deeper front bumper that mimics air dams without incorporating them because they're not needed, and a black stripe on the hood that matches the roof panel. Walk to the back of the car and you'll find a roof-mounted spoiler, plus an air diffuser integrated into the rear bumper. Multi-spoke alloy wheels add a finishing touch to the design. The visual upgrades continue inside where Nissan has added sports seats for the front passengers, a flat-bottom steering wheel with a 12 o'clock mark, and more red accents for good measure. It's not all about looks, though. Nissan promises the Leaf Nismo is truly exciting to drive. The list of handling-enhancing modifications includes a sport-tuned suspension which lowers the ride height, high-performance tires, and a reprogrammed ECU that helps the electric motor deliver instant acceleration at all speeds. More specific performance details haven't been published, so we don't know what else Nissan has up its sleeve, or what effect the body kit has on range. The brand new second generation LEAF uses an electric motor rated at 147 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. Those are generous increases of 40 horses and 49 pound-feet over the outgoing model, but there is still room for improvement, especially since the LEAF gained 100 pounds in its transition from a first to a second generation model. A car the size and weight of the LEAF would need at least 250 horsepower to be considered a true hot hatch. Let's hope Nissan's Nismo team hasn't forgotten about that aspect of building a sports car. We're a little bit skeptical. The Sentra Nismo didn't receive a bump in power. The Leaf Nismo won't shine on its own at the Tokyo show. Nissan will also introduce a Nismo Tune Serena, a tall, odd-looking minivan sold only in overseas markets, and an updated version of the Skyline. Showgoers who attend the big Tokyo gathering at the end of the month will get to check out no less than 13 Nissan vehicles. The first edition of the new Nissan LEAF will go on sale today and cost £26,490, as revealed at its first appearance in Europe. Called the LEAF 2.0, the limited edition version of the all-electric hatchback is kitted out with semi-autonomous functions including the ability to park itself. The price tag of £26,490 is specifically for this model, including the government grant, but Nissan will no longer be renting out batteries on top of this cost. It was unveiled at the Nissan Futures 3.0 event in Oslo, the first time the EV or its ProPilot functionality has made an appearance in Europe. It debuted alongside the new longer-range ENV 200 van and home charging systems, all of which Nissan believes will get more drivers behind the wheel of an electric vehicle. ProPilot, the name Nissan gives its autonomous system, will enable lane keep assist, intelligent cruise control and traffic jam assist all at the push of a button. This will be an optional extra, fitted as standard on top spec models. Nissan LEAF product specialist for Europe Francesco Giacoloni told the Press Association, We have big expectations and the car represents a massive improvement for all technology in the car and from a design perspective, so we're now moving to a more mainstream design. I think some customers for the old LEAF were more reluctant to take the car because of some polarizing in the design. They will not have these objections anymore, therefore we can grow much faster and appeal to a broader population than we have done so far. The Nissan LEAF also gets the addition of the e-pedal for the first time. This uses regenerative braking when the accelerator is released, 
meaning most drivers will rarely use the brake pedal and will cover short journeys using minimal battery power. Nissan is set to unveil some new concept cars at the Tokyo Motor Show that could someday make it into production. The new cars are NISMO versions of the Leaf EV and the Serena minivan. The Leaf NISMO concept will feature the latest version of ProPilot single-lane autonomous driving tech. That tech allows the car to park itself automatically with full control over accelerator, brakes, steering, shift changing, and parking brake. The car also has e-pedal like the standard Leaf that allows drivers to come to a complete stop using only the brake pedal. Nissan says that the Leaf NISMO concept has a sporty NISMO exterior with parts that help enhance aerodynamic performance and reduce lift. The interior is black with red accents. The concept also gets a sport-tuned suspension and high-performance tires along with a custom-tuned computer to improve acceleration. We've driven the 2018 Leaf, and for more details check out that story. The Serena NISMO minivan concept is fitted with an updated exterior to make it look sportier featuring custom aero parts. The interior gets the signature NISMO red stitching as well. There are no images of either concept car at this time. The refreshed skyline will also be sewn off in Tokyo. The car gets a revamped exterior, new aluminum wheel designs, and more. The car has a new steering wheel and shift knob inside and a new instrument panel surface finish. The refreshed Skyline will land at dealers in Japan in December 2017. Nissan revealed the second generation of its all-electric Leaf hatchback earlier this month, with an output of 147 horsepower and a 236 pounds FT of torque, as well as an estimated range of 150 miles. That's all well and good. But what suddenly got us interested is an upcoming, high-performance Nismo version. Today at an event in Europe, Nissan confirmed it will be bringing a Leaf Nismo concept to the Toyko Motor Show later this month. According to Autocar, this car is meant to preview the final design that will be put into production. Nissan didn't reveal any specs during the announcement, but did show an image of the concept to journalists. Compared to the normal Leaf, the Nismo concept features a more aggressive red-accented front bumper, red-accented side skirts, a partially blacked-out hood, a black roof, and different wheels. As of now, there's no telling what other sorts of other suspension or battery output upgrades Nissan will give the Leaf Nismo, if any, so we'll have to wait until Tokyo to find out. Niche is the word for the 2017 Subaru XV 2.0 IL Premium. In its second generation the XV remains a lifted up in plastic clad version of the Japanese brand's Impreza small hatchback, so it technically isn't a small SUV. Yet with a permanent all-wheel drive system, excellent ground clearance of 220mm, and even a hill descent control system, it promises to be more off-road capable than small SUV models such as a Mazda CX-3 or Toyota CHR. This middle specification 2.0 IL Premium costs just over $30 K2, so depending on the perspective it really is either one expensive lifted hatch, or an affordable SUV the XV 2.0 IL Premium is well equipped for $32,140 plus on-road costs, or $36,724 drive away, in Sydney, according to Subaru's online pricing calculator. For the $1,800 premium over the standard 2.0 IL, the premium adds integrated satellite navigation and a sunroof plus several other cabin features listed in this section below. Its closest rival is the similarly raised Volkswagen Golf Alltrack 132 TSI, which is based on the wagon version of that small car, not the hatch as the XV is to Impreza. It costs $35,990 drive away, and while it lacks the Subaru sunroof and adaptive cruise control, it gains automatic headlights wipers and rearview mirror dimming. The Volkswagen also gets a larger boot and stronger engine, but without quite the ground clearance. The question now is whether that's enough to more highly recommend the newer Subaru.
in the proper SUV segment. Meanwhile, an equivalent petrol all-wheel drive Mazda CX-3 S Touring is $1,150 cheaper than this 2.0 IL Premium, while scoring 18-inch alloy wheels, versus 17th here, digital radio, head-up display and auto headlights. Although it lacks this model's adaptive cruise control and sunroof, and gets less ground clearance, less rear legroom and a smaller boot to, er, boot. Subaru has taken the Impreza's nicely finished and well-built interior, then added some real funk and flair, plus a slightly higher driving position. Simple additions such as textured cloth trim, made from then a durable material that could be found on a Kathmandu backpack, lift the ambience considerably. The soft-touch plastic and full leather dashboard remain, though the orange stitching likewise raises the game and better complements the trio of color screens. The 6.1-inch top-wide screen displays the usual eyesight driver assistance features, leaving the 8.0-inch high-resolution center touchscreen to display its square audio, phone, nav and Apple CarPlay Android Auto tiles, which couldn't be easier to use. While the color trip screen ahead of the driver also includes a digital speedometer. Raised seating even seems to have fixed the Impreza's driving position issue that tilts the seat base too far forward. It usually takes an electrically adjustable option, standard on top spec Impreza 2.0 IS and XV 2.0 IS, to solve the problem, but the XV's front pews are both supportive to thighs as well as being pushy. Further back in this Subaru isn't quite so impressive. Rear legroom is generous, but headroom is only reasonable, this 178cm tall tester's head just misses the roof. There are also no rear air vents, which are standard in the Golf Alltrack, and there's only basic 60-40 split fold flexibility to improve on the very tight boot space. With a rated capacity of 310 liters, the XV is more capacious than only some of the small SUV set, beating a Mazda CX-3, 264L, but not a Toyota CHR, 377L. For something priced like the Golf Alltrack 132 TSI it also gives up near half of the Volkswagen 605L boot. Indeed, even a Golf hatch is more capacious, at 395L. What it means is the Subaru's cabin is really only good for two front passengers plus camping luggage. Or four people with a restrained weekend getaway packing ethos. It takes less distance than an around-the-block test drive to realize the Subaru XV suspension to invest the Impreza's. This isn't a new phenomenon, though, given the brand's medium-sized outback also trumps the liberty on which it's also based. At low speed the 2.0 IL Premium's ride quality does suffer the same slightly abrupt jolting sensation that afflicts its lower hatchback sibling. And, at the other end of the scale, at higher speeds it suffers from a bit of body float. Everywhere else, however, the raised XV also raises the comfort stakes, leveraging the benefits of its broader tires with nicely soothing and supple responses whether traveling over chopped up urban arterial roads or successive dirt road corrugations. The steering of the Subaru is also among the finest the brand has delivered, with nicely mid-weighted and consistent response from just off the slightly vacant center position. Its direct and linear nature also means the driver need never second-guess or adjust the amount of turn required. Just pick a line, and the XV will track true. Add in rather impressive refinement, both in terms of wind, road and engine noise, and a surprisingly energetic chassis, and the 2.0 IL Premium doesn't even need to default to impressing off-road to shine. Before it gets off the beaten track, however, a flaw emerges, the engine. There is nothing especially wrong with the 2.0-liter four-cylinder boxer petrol unit itself, which delivers 115 kilowatts of power at 6,000 rpms and 196 newton meters of torque at 4,400 rpms. However, that latter figure simply struggles to deal the portly 1474 kilograms curb weight, which is 50 kilograms heavier than the Impreza with the same engine. It makes for a miserly torque-to-weight ratio of 132 newton-meters per ton, 
which is beaten by a 1.2-liter four-cylinder Swift at 133 Newton meters per ton. The Suzuki costs half the price of this XP, and also teams with an automatic continuously variable transmission CVT. For greater perspective, a 1.8-liter Turbo Golf Alltrack delivers 189 Newton meters per ton. The Subaru engine must pay its CVT dues, though because the calibration of both the auto and throttle in this XV enhances its drivability. Step-off acceleration, from traffic lights, is immediate, but sink the throttle more firmly and there's little to be found. When overtaking, this low-revving 2.0-liter feels as though it's gasping for air. This is the slowest vehicle in the class, and around town consumption of 12.0 liters per 100 kilometers only lowered to 8.8 L 100 kilometers after a countryside off-road testing. Speaking of which, the permanent four-wheel drive setup proved more than adept in crawling over obstacles on an off-road course. The XV has an X note button that lets the electronics portion torque from between a fixed 50-50 and 95-5 front to rear there was never more than 50% of drive going to the rear. And with ground clearance at 225mm, only a larger, similarly priced but entry-level Toyota RAV4 GX comes close with 215mm of space between its body and the dirt. Despite sitting 20mm higher than a Golf, the Ultrac version pales at 175mm, while a CX-3 is even lower at 160mm rock hopping really is the XV's greatest advantage. A CX-3 is faster and more fun, but is even more cramped and it can't go far off-road. The CHR can't venture far either, but it bests the XV for space and on-road finesse while matching it for quality and refinement. With a 50-50 differential lock, the RAV4 would rival the Subaru off the beaten track, and it trains, a lot of, equipment for, a lot of, extra space. Perhaps the best balance of all things, however, really is the Golf Alltrack, with a superb engine, classy cabin, impressive space and competitive pricing. How much does 225mm of ground clearance mean to buyers? It's the best reason to pick the Subaru XV 2.0L Premium over some jacked-up wagon or small SUV rivals. It also means a buyer can have more equipment for the money than a bigger, base model or AV4 that would best challenge it for light off-roading. Conversely, however, this Subaru lacks rear room, and it is slow for the price. The rest of the package is so compelling that the addition of the brand's 1.6-liter turbo, as available in the Levort wagon, could add another star to the XV score. With a nicely furnished cabin, excellent infotainment and active safety technologies, mostly impressive ride comfort, surprisingly fun handling, and decent off-road capability, the 2.0 IL Premium certainly deserves that finishing touch.